We are now ready to use SPSS for data analysis. Take a look at Table 16.1 on page 440 in your textbook. This table shows the usage and attitude towards Nike shoes. We have number of respondents, and let's see how many respondents we have. I think it continues on the next page. 45 respondents. We have user group, user groups 1, 2, and 3. We have gender, 1 and 2, and we have attitudes, 1 through 7. Now, without a code book, I don't really know what user group 1, 2, 3 refers to. I don't know what gender refers to, and I don't know what the attitude scale is. Uh, if I turn to page 439 in the book, they explain here, the frequency procedure is illustrated using the data which gives the attitude towards Nike, usage, gender. Attitude is measured on a seven-point Likert type scale, one very unfavorable, seven very favorable. The users have been coded as one, two, or three, representing nine, light, medium, or heavy users. And gender has been coded as one for females and two for males. This table gives the data for only 45 respondents so that the calculations can be done by hand. Okay, we're not going to do the calculations by hand. We're going to be using SPSS. The steps for using SPSS are on slide 58 in chapter 16. All right, these are the steps for using SPSS to produce a frequency distribution. And you can see here uh, we have nine steps. So let's do those steps. Okay, here I have the SPSS program open. I'm going to go to File and get the data. Okay, here I've located the data file for table 16.1. So I'm going to click Open. And here it is open. And you can see user group, sex, and attitude. And we have case number. And let me scroll down and see how many cases we have here. It should be the same as in the book, which is 45. So we have 45 uh, cases, three user groups, two set for sex, male, female. Actually, it's female, male, female, one, male, two. And we have attitude. Let's see if they put the data view in. Um, <clears throat> Okay, we have at the bottom here data view and variable view. Let's click on variable view and you can see the labels for sex and we can see here the values are one is a female and two is a male. So somebody already put this in for us and that's very helpful. We can see what a one, a two, or a three is. And let's see if attitude also has Okay, it just has one for very unfavorable and seven for favorable. Okay, let's go back to the data view. All right, and let's take a look at the PowerPoint. Okay, so the first step is to select Analyze, then Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequencies. So let's go to the SBSS program. We click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics here, Frequencies. Click on Frequencies. OK. And then you have to decide which variables you want to run a frequency distribution on. Uh, let's see what they did in your textbook. They used Attitude. So they did a frequency distribution on Attitude. Okay, so let's do that. We'll click on Attitude here. And then this is the Move button, and we move it into this variable list. And you can move as many of these variables as you want to the variable list, and then decide what kind of a chart you want. We want a histogram. Actually, we want a bar chart. All right, continue with frequencies or percentages. Let's keep it at frequencies. Well, we can put it as percentages or frequencies. It doesn't matter. Um, for the statistics, let's click on mean, median, and mode. 
All right, let's see if they have you doing anything else. Mean, medium mode, standard deviation, variance, and range. Okay, so let's do that. Standard deviation, variance, and range. Okay, and click continue. And of course, you can click on as many things as you want. Uh, click on continue and click OK. And let's see what happens. Okay, now this new window that just popped up is called an output window. Let me maximize it so you can see it a little better. And you can see the frequencies are here on the output. And we can see there were 45 people who responded. One person did not respond, all right? So we have a total of 44 valid responses. These are the at, uh, frequency uh, numbers, frequency distribution, the percentage, valid percent, and cumulative percent. Remember, we did that in class. And here is a bar chart for uh, attitude towards Nike. And you can see what the mode is. The mode is the most typical value. That's the highest peak on the distribution. So that would be here. That would be 6. Okay, and it looks like around nine people responded. Uh, that's the frequency is over here. And the attitude towards Nike, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see here the label for a one is replaced with very unfavorable, and a seven was replaced with the label very favorable. Okay, so now that's the output. And what you can do with the output when you are creating a report is you can right click and copy and then paste this into or export it into a Word document. So you can take any of this output and say, um, click and, and copy and paste it into something else. Uh, you can also save the output. All right. So that's all there is to creating a frequency distribution and a bar chart uh, using SPSS. It was very simple. Uh, you can rewind this and, and watch it again and see the steps or go to the PowerPoint uh, slide and copy those steps exactly. All right, now let's take a look at how we would run a cross tabulation and let's see what they do. Um, they're running a cross tabulation of user group and sex. You can see this table on page 453 in your book gender by usage of Nike shoes, so we'd like to reproduce this using SPSS. Here we have usage, light users, medium users, heavy users, and gender, male and female, and notice we don't want one, two, three, we want light, medium, heavy. We don't want one, two, we want female and male, so we want the labels printed out. So let's see how the steps are done using um, SPSS and refer to slide 60 from chapter 16 and you'll see the steps for the detailed steps for producing a cross tabulation and again it's not very difficult you go back to the analyze command descriptive statistics and select cross tabs then you move the variable user group to the rows and sex to the columns all right so let's do that Okay, so we have Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then we go down here to Cross Tabs. All right, and you can see here Rows and Columns. Uh, for Rows, we wanted the User Group, so we will click on that and move that over. For Sex, we want that as the column, and so we move that over. All right, the next thing you do is click Cells. All right, and we have uh, observed for the counts. And let's see, let's do it the way they did it. We'll counts and column under the percentages. So they want column percentages. All right, so let's do the same thing as they have here. Okay, column under the percentages. And finally, we have, we click continue. The statistics we want. We're going to run a chi-square. Uh, 
um, mostly in this class we're just going to be doing uh, chi-square. Uh, since this is nominal type of data, let's take a look at Kramer's V and take a look and see what we get. Okay, so we click OK. And you have to scroll down the output window. You can see what's happening here. All right, we got a nice table. The table here has the labels. It has the number in each cell. And remember, we did this in class by hand, actually. And if you remember what we did by hand for chi-square, we calculated 6.341. All right. And that was a test of significance to see if chi-square is significant. Uh, any value here in this column that tests for significance, if it's less than 0.05, then it is highly significant. That means that the chi-square value would have been in the tail area, which is the rejection region. So we can see here 0.04 is where it would become significant, and 0.05 is our alpha. So 6.341 test statistic is highly significant. Uh, therefore, we would reject the null, and we find that there is a difference between the two variables, which are sex and user group. And if we eyeball this, we can see that it seems like more females percentage-wise are light users, and more males percentage-wise are heavy users. But we have to use a chi-square test of significance to see if this is really significant or if it is not something, it's just something we're looking at, but we don't really have the statistical significance. Okay, so now you have all the tools you need to do the project. You know how to respecify a variable. You know how to recode a variable. You know how to run a frequency distribution. You know how to run a cross tabulation. And you know how to do a chi-square test of significance. And one more time to see if that chi-square statistic is significant, you would look in the right-hand corner where it says um, significance and as two-sided, two but it's significance. Actually, uh, it shouldn't say two-sided because chi-square is only one side because it's square values. But if you were to look this number up in a chi-square table, then it is significant at 0.04, and generally we, we pick 0.05. So any value that's under 0 .04, uh, 0 0.05 would be significant. So you would look here, and you would say, okay, that number is less than 0 0.05 because it is less than our alpha value, 0.05, therefore reject the null, and we find that there is a difference between user group and sex.